This is a three-dimensional solid model example, which uh, I'll solve using ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. It's a simple I-beam built into a wall at the left end and a thousand newton force applied at the right hand downwards. It's two meters long with a specified cross section. We're going to build this up with a simple sketch. We'll extrude it to get a solid and then we'll mesh this. We'll apply displacement boundary conditions and forces and solve. We expect using the engineer's bending formula, my upon i, that the stress, direct stress on this, bending stress on this beam uh, is going to be about 8.7 megapascals. We will start with the workbench project schematic and we'll add the static structural analysis system. And we'll use the basic um, default steel for this material. So I'm not going to change the engineering data, but we can start with the geometry using the design modeler. So we'll start new geometry using that. In the design modeler, we'll sketch the geometry on the XY plane. So we can look at that plane and zoom in to get a representative distance. So we'll sketch it in the positive XY plane and um, we'll do a couple of rectangles. But before we do that, we can turn on automatic constraints and then draw the rectangles to specify the, the flanges and the, the webs. So these are going to be constrained with each other automatically. Um, we'll put some relative dimensions later on. Um, we do that through either horizontal or vertical dimensions. So if it doesn't look right just now, uh, we'll make sure that it is going to be correctly dimensioned. And we will put some vertical dimensions. That's the thickness of the flanges. And the height of the web. So we know the thickness of the flanges are, for example, um, 10 millimeters, so it's going to be 0, 1. And V5 is also 0 0.01 meters. The horizontal dimension H1 is 100 millimeters, which is 0 0.1. H2 is the same, 0 0.1. And H3 thickness is um, again 0 0.01 we'll need to add one more dimension to center the web on the I-beam so we can do that by a horizontal dimension again and constrain that with the um, y-axis so H7 that's going to be the point zero four five. So that gives us an accurate representation of the um, I beam cross section. We can zoom in. The V six dimension we'll need to change that to one hundred and eighty E minus three. It's the same as 18 centimeters or 180 millimeters. So that gives us a general um, I-beam cross-section that we wanted. We can 
detail it further by putting fillets, etc., chamfers, but um, we'll keep the geometry simple because we are simply interested in the maximum bending stresses on the flanges. So we can edit this geometry by trimming some of these locations. So uh, we'll do that under modify and trim. So we can click on this location and also click on this location. So that gives us one closed loop that will represent a surface uh, which is going to be able to be extruded. And we can do that under modeling. And if you look at the sketch one, we can create an extrude on this. And we'll select the sketch and then press apply. And we'll need to say how long that's going to be. And we know that it's about two meters long. And we can simply generate this and it will give us our three dimensional solid model for the uh, I beam. And if you check the solid, that looks as we want it. So we can now translate this into ANSYS uh, mechanical and start solving it. We have now started ANSYS uh, mechanical to do the static structural analysis on this I-beam. So the I-beam has been transferred from design modeler attached in the mechanical application. We can look at what the mesh would be look like uh, if we simply update it without putting any controls on it. So that gives a, a fairly coarse mesh, which again we can use uh, to make a, a solution, a basic solution, and we can try to refine the geometry of the mesh on this geometry. On the static structural, we can add some supports. So we're going to fix um, the, the face on one side. So let's select the surface tool and then um, select this face. So this face is going to be constrained and we are going to apply um, a force on the uh, opposite face. So we can select that face as well and we can do loads, force and we can select this face we can apply it either as a vector and align it with one of these lines or define it as a component. So we can define it as, say, in the y direction, minus 1000 newtons. But we also need to make sure that that is attached to this face. So we need to press apply. So these are all the boundary conditions that are essential to solve. And we can um, simply do that under solution. But let's first apply a couple of solution items like deformation and stresses, equivalent stress, and the maximum principal stress. And then we can solve. That's relatively fast and what we can see is that the stresses at the root are the highest as expected and that, that you can find some um, relatively high concentrations on the corners. We can try to refine the mesh and we'll see that these stresses will go up even higher. So the maximum stress in, in terms of maximum principal stress is 
about 10 megapascals and that's higher than the predicted engineers bending formula um, so we can try now to go back to mesh and then do a bit of uh, refinement we can try some mesh controls um, and then we can do let's try a mapped face meshing so we can select that face apply and also define um, some sizing um, so it could be um, apply to this whole geometry so we can do apply and we can say um, the element size is say 0 0.005 which is about 5 millimeters so we can generate this mesh and see what that looks like So you can see that that's a, a very refined mesh, which is probably far more refined than you would need. So you would have the stress concentrations at the built end, but uh, you've got a refinement on all the uh, geometry. So that's a bit too much. So we'll expect that it'll solve bit slower. We can go to statistics and look at how many nodes and elements that has generated. So we can see that it's got 338,000 nodes and 60,000 elements. The refined model has sold as well. It took longer than the much coarser model of course. And we can now look at uh, the stresses on this refined model. So we can see that the stresses, especially in the built-in end, is, uh, are much higher. Uh, so it's, it's actually almost doubled compared to the coarse mesh, about 19.5 megapascals. And they are concentrated in, um, in the corners of the um, built-in end. So if we can put in say the probes for maximums and the minimum um, we can see uh, the layer locations we can also put some probes um, for example the stress near the top end close to the um, the built-in location is for example 8.4 megapascals so that's very close and that ties with the engineers bending formula result.